Well, I think the increase in food prices uh, is the most serious crisis now facing uh, poor people. Keep in mind, there's already about a billion people in the world, a uh, majority of whom are women, uh, who don't have enough food, who are hungry, and that affects the nutrition. Uh, we have to be very careful, particularly for children and uh, pregnant mothers, uh, lactating mothers, because you can lose a generation if you don't get the uh, proper nutrition. So we need to have a broad-based approach in dealing with this. Uh, it's got to deal with everything from trying to help smallholder farmers take advantage of this with improving the agriculture uh, to dealing with some of the challenges of the food price volatility and helping countries focus on the most vulnerable. Well, I think the key is to focus on the most vulnerable. So first, I think any types of safety net programs that will focus on um, children and uh, 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 pregnant mothers those are going to be key to have with our programs or those of the World Food Program or others. Second, I think there's an opportunity here to try to connect some of the things we're trying to do on the smallholder side, increasing their productivity, their production, looking all across the value chain from property rights, seeds, fertilizers, uh, irrigation, storage, to connect some of that with the need that will be uh, purchased from the humanitarian uh, partners such as the World Food Program and we've got some things in Africa that I think would allow us to help take advantage of what will be I think rising food prices for a long period of time. Then there's aspects to try to make sure governments don't make the problem worse. So export bans simply increase the uncertainty, the risk, the volatility. At a minimum we need a code of conduct so that uh, humanitarian organizations can buy the food uh, that they need. Then there's other things one can try to do to improve some of the information flows. So for example, long-range weather forecasting, which we're trying to work on in Sub-Saharan Africa with the World Meteorological Organization. And then there's a series of other steps we can do to try to help uh, prepare for difficult eventualities. The world tends to be wary of large food stocks. Um, but where we have those, we need to have good information about them so that we know how to deal with crises, it's particularly uh, weak in some of the developing countries. And then in some areas where we know that there tend to be problems and we know that the infrastructure is weak, such as Horn of Africa, it may make sense to have food stocks perhaps run by the World Food Program so we can get support where it's needed most quickly.